But people tell me their business all the time, and I don't know why they tell me their business. Maybe because they know I'm not gonna tell their business. I like I do a good job of keeping stuff to myself. Like I'm I'm pretty good at that. Um, but yeah, I ain't, I ain't never looking for nobody business. Yeah, nah. Mind the business that pays you. Mind the business that pays you. Now, I've shared my business with you because you have shared your business with me. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know. Maybe I need to rethink this because I think, I don't know if you willingly share all your business because, Mel, you are open book. Yeah, I'm open book. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not afraid. (laughs) So, I don't know. In those moments, I I, I, I think we're having like a, a, a moment between us. So I'm like, oh man, Mel feels real comfortable. But he was saying that anyway. We had I was saying that anyway. Yeah. So now I'm now man, I wanna... on, man at the stoplight <laughs> waiting for change. Hey, nigga, this is what I'm going to. <laughs> Have a safe space. We on all platforms. You need to tune in. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share with your friends. Welcome to Mel D, the podcast for men to have a safe space. Welcome to Mel D. Welcome to the cave with Mel Freud and Lex. I like it. Is my undershirt poking out the top? <laughs> Who cares? Hey, I don't like that. Really? Even if I was out on a regular day, I don't like my undershirt talking. Nigga like fooling with f***ing bacon neck for the last 10 minutes. I'm trying to make sure it's straight. It's straight, God, right, thank no. you, God, dog. Nigga like, he like to look good. He mad at me for wanting to look good. God, dog. God, God dog. You call it bacon neck? Yeah. yeah it's all wrinkled around the neck. He know, I know what the hell you talking about. But it happens to the real ones. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It happens been to the fooling real. with his f***ing collar for 15 minutes. <laughs> Golly. I was just trying to make sure it was straight. <laughs> All of this is going to be in the episode. I'm going to let y'all know this right now. Every little bit Nigga, of I'm it. Try, just trying to make sure I look presentable. When he doing it and he don't want to say shit to me, then when I you know, try to do it, he's like, Nigga, hurry up. But it, you know what it is? It's when cats already got themselves together. They'd already took the time for themselves to get I themselves together. You ain't together. seen me get up. I ain't looking once. I put my shirt on was ready to go. That's what I'm saying. You have finished. Yeah. But then you don't have patience for those who haven't. No, I have patience, but I know Mel. <laughs> it took Mel 15 minutes to put on a Nike t-shirt. <laughs> Keep fixing the undershirt, tucking it in, and all this other shit. Come on, man. (laughs) Anyway, yo, (laughs) welcome back. Another edition of the Melly D's podcast. You know what's going on. It's your boy, Melly Mel, uh, a.k.a. I'm a whoop lace ass, uh, (laughs) a.k.a. I'm getting tired of this abuse, man, a.k.a. your favorite truth teller, uh, AK, if you don't want to know, don't ask me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm in here. I'm back, man. Well, I'm gonna get laced, bro. For real. Well, it's it's your boy Troy, <laughs> aka the Meek Shell inherit the Earth, aka hey. the one who uh 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 who who tries to diffuse situations like this will be blessed. Uh-huh. That's 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 who I am. What it is though, Host what Troy. It is, though. It's your boy, Dr. Life Coach Lace, a.k.a. NBA Old Boy, a.k.a. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? It really should be, did I do that? <laughs> That's what it should be, because you know you be doing you know something. You know you be doing it. What you did... know you be doing it. You know, you know what? I really ain't mad that he doing it. I'm just mad that he caught me slipping. What you mean? <laughs> I'm just mad he caught me slipping. You know How? what I'm saying? Like, what? No, because usually I'm on point, but you caught me slipping. I ain't have a rebuttal, so then Can't I was a little tight what? about it. I'm just saying, like... Bacon neck threw it out there talking about, you know, like you caught me on guard. So usually I'm like usually I'm ready, but I wasn't ready at the time. And I usually got something, you know, I got so I won't. So I then got usually what you do in that case, when right. someone frying you and you ain't got no ammo right off top, you be ready to fight. Now I gotta make I gotta get it back. You go bop me like score. you go bop me like T Dot. <laughs> you go bop wow. me like that. Wow. I'm go, still <laughs> emotionally dealing with that. And that's how you go do it. You go me. bop me like that? See, that's hey. why it's why niggas don't want to be vulnerable. Hey. Keep being vulnerable, bro. Be that's vulnerable, right. bro. Be, yeah, you gotta be vulnerable. We back. See, the thing is though, you can't you you can be vulnerable, but you have to be able to accept the outcome of your vulnerability. That is true. Or be able to live with it. Right. That is true. You know what I'm be saying? Able to live with it. Because people gonna make fun you go ro- cats go roast regardless. That's just what it is. And that's and that's and that's sad. Why is that sad? That's People sad. gonna roast regardless. That cats are gonna roast regardless. Why though? But I mean, 
it's something that I should come to expect because of the the people that I hang out with. Fact, you gotta know your personnel. You gotta know your personnel. Yeah, you gotta know your personnel. You gotta know your personnel. And quite frankly, I mean, it was sixth grade. Like, you gotta get over that. <laughs> shit at this point. Like, I mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to live. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to expedite your trauma experience, but you gotta get over that. Shit, bro. First of all, lace, you can't expedite. Expedite trauma by yes, telling you me can just expedite by getting, it by getting, over, getting it. over that. You shit. you can't tell me to get over in it. In this though. instance, I can. I know there's no you know scientific uh, approval process of that, but this was sixth grade, bro. Like you pushing forty. <laughs> like let's get over this, <laughs> shit, my nigga. You got bopped. You got embarrassed. We moving on. When are you allowed to tell people that they that they need to get over stuff? Because I think it's a time limit. A lot. It of is. That is a good there question. Is no time it limit is. for trauma. And it's not. And stuff. I mean, as I just that, yeah, as I alluded I to, I disagree wholeheartedly. As I alluded to, there is not a, a set time frame depending on the trauma. That is a really good question because some things you just need to get over. Yes. I mean, you have to. You have to. You took a L. It's all right. Like, because when you don't get over something, you're then holding other people hostage to you not being get, not getting over it. So now we got to tippy toe around everything that we say around you're you. You're really holding yourself too, though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's the that's that's more. That's more. You're holding yourself uh, to that. Yeah. That's one thing I hate doing is walking on eggshells. Trying to dance around someone's emotions. You sure? I'm, I'm sure about that. In the, word, in the, word, if sure, in the I, words of my daughter, you sure about that? Because I think that you, <laughs> you do. Sure about that? I'm not going to say that you enjoy it, but I do think that you do it as a part of your character. What you mean? Dance around people's feelings because you don't want to you don't want to hurt, hurt people's offend. feelings. You don't want to be offensive. You don't want to uh, create a riff or uh, a unless wedge it's biblical, between people. Then you give it to you know them. what I'm saying. Depending on who the situation and who we talking about. Just because I do it don't mean I like it. I know, but I'm just saying. It's I, part of your character that you do that, though. But I tried. I I, I like to address things initially, like mm-hmm. uh, like head on. Yeah, let me talk to you for, for a Yeah, let me talk to you for a minute. Mm-hmm. Me and Lace had a, a moment like that oh, uh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. couple months uh, last year. What did he do? I was like, hey, like, hey man, uh, that's neither here nor there. I didn't do anything. He, actually, yeah, that was the thing. He did not didn't do, do anything. anything. And I was like, but uh, niggas like to keep Blake's name in their mouth. They don't f-ing know me, oh, so okay. it's just very and that's what it was interesting. Hey. And so I was just like, hey man, this is what being said. Lace was like, what? Right? And he addressed yeah, I'm it. I'm gonna get the drop off that. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I said I'm gonna get the drop on that later. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's nothing like that. But it's just like, <laughs> yo, I don't even know this nigga from nowhere. Why the fuck he talking about me? It be like that. But I hope you appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? That I came and I was. Oh yeah, like, no, yeah, that bro. was nothing. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That was nothing. I was more so like, like as you said, like, what are you? <laughs> what? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> now that was a genuine situation. <laughs> what did I? Which Lace could ask, what did I do? That was a genuine situation because. You just never know what yeah. was was going on and how people uh, um, perceive things. Yeah. But legit though, I was just having that conversation this week uh, about not not similar to what we had discussed before, but how people can create perceptions and they have never had a conversation with you, never, never been around you, etc. And I'm just like, I don't cater to people's perceptions. That's just not what I do. But it's just so ironic how people can create a whole lifetime movie about you <laughs> and you ain't never even had. Any kind of engagement with them. Right, 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 right. Like legit, legit. To this day, still no engagement with uh, from that situation. I, like, n- not at all. Crazy. I, exactly. Exactly. People yeah. will build a whole universe around right. one instance in someone else's life, and they now they didn't figure out everything about you. You right. don't know me. Not at all. Me. You don't know me. I say this. I say this often with some of my friends um, that you don't know me. Like they'll say, "Well, Troy, you just like this. Man, you don't know me. Right. You think I'm wholesome because that's what I present, mm. but that ain't wholesome for real. For real, I am depraved. You wholesome? <laughs> no, you. you I know that you don't want to be wholesome. I, I know depraved. that you don't want to be wholesome. No, no, no. I've I've embraced the wholesome. Okay, good. I've, I've I've told y'all that is my role in y'all's life. Fact. Because y'all is no wholesomeness Fact. in if wholesomeness was milk, I'm I'm one hundred percent. Bruh, how y'all do you are go? skim or two percent. Yeah, that's what y'all First of all, I'm almondy. Milk. I'm almond. I'm almondy. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't even milk. He ain't even milk. 
I'm Almondy. <laughs> I'm <laughs> but but in, in all seriousness, like I, I need to stay true to myself. Uh, no, you're and, and because it's nothing that is wrong with it. What I perceive to be wrong is that I'm trying to fit in with the world's pers- like the world. Mm-hmm. And so, but I understand I, that's not my. I ain't, you're not of the world, I, so. and I can't do that. And 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 if I tried to fit in, I would look more stupid doing that than to be wholesome. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. I think what's. Uh, and I'm just going to use me as the example for this situation. I think because I'm so consistent in taking me everywhere I go that it's easier for people to develop an opinion about me if they haven't met me because people can hear things about me and know how I am, and they'll immediately be like, ain't no way he did that, or I, that nigga did that. Well, <laughs> like, no, you know, no, not, like, no, I would agree because I'm the same way. Yeah. But in certain instances, if you if somebody that you have legit had no interaction in, with. interaction or engagement with, it's just odd hearing the, a, a narrative created when if you know me, you know me. That's exactly. why that's why yeah. Troy was able to have a conversation with me because like yo, nah, that's I, I, I'll bring it to his attention, but that ain't. What I know of him, you know what I'm saying? But we have a relationship. But if somebody else from left field was like, yo, this, that, and the third, that's more so. So I agree with you. Um, but sometimes cats will still come up with a whole bl- full-blown True. narrative and have no context whatsoever. And when they get, when they have opportunity to say something to you or address it, won't say anything But you wouldn't want a stranger to come up to you, a cat that never had a conversation, and the first conversation they have with you is like, hey. Well, if you're a stranger, shut the f- up. Why are you even talking about me? <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's points, that, are, made, points that's, are being made right now. That's points very simple, it, it, and that's your point. You are a stranger. Why are you even engaging? Or why are you in my business? Right in the first f-ing place. And that is one thing I've had to understand is that I can't worry about everybody's business. No, not no, at all. I cannot worry. I can't worry about um because I, I I would I would worry about how people would treat their own personal family, how they would treat their own personal relationships and stuff like that. If you want to mess up your relationship, I, at the most, I can give you a word, but I can't worry about right. you. Right, not at all. Not you got to do what you, you got to go do what you got to do. You got to live your life. Yes. Now, I am here for to be a wealth of knowledge and wisdom for yeah. you, to be able yeah. to share if you want to embark upon that. But otherwise, you got to go do you, boo-boo. Do you. And expect me to do the same. Do you? And I tell you right now, I don't go looking for nobody's business. No. I don't care about nobody's business, bro. Mm-hmm. I, if the, the crazy thing is, I think that because I don't care about other people's business, people bring me their the business. business yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People bring me their stuff. If I know anything about someone else's business, they've literally volunteered right. to share their business mm-hmm. with me. And I never go asking for it. I ain't asking you questions. I don't want to I don't want to know about it. You know what I'm saying? Because in some cases, I'd rather be ignorant. So if something do come up, I can say I don't know what the hell they talk about. My I have no I idea what this person talking about, but people tell me their business all the time, and I don't know why they tell me their business. Maybe because they know I'm not gonna tell their business. I like I do a good job of keeping stuff to myself. Like I'm I'm pretty good at that. Um, but yeah, I ain't, I ain't never looking for nobody business. Yeah, nah. Mind the business that pays you. Mind the business that pays. You. Now I've shared my business with you because. You have shared your business with me. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know. I, maybe I need to rethink this because I think I don't know if you willingly share all your business. Because Mel, you are open book. Yeah, I'm open book. <laughs> you, you I'm not afraid. <laughs> so I don't know. In those moments, I I I, I think we're having like a, a a moment between us. I'm like, oh man, Mel feels real comfortable. But he was saying it anyway. We had telling anybody. Anyway. So now I now <laughs> man, I want man at the stoplight <laughs> waiting for change. <laughs> Hey, nigga, this is what I'm going to. So now I want to retract every moment that I've had with you. For those I'm going to this change, but look, this look, is what I need to tell you. Listen, for those who don't know, me, uh, we, we, when we will record online, me, Mel, and Lace, we will finish the episode when we record. Then Lace automatically is like, all right, all right y'all, y'all, I got a date with Destiny. I'll holler at y'all. Bye, bye. And then and then it just be me and Mel, just be just lollygagging. We just not quick enough to click to get out. And we just start sharing. And now 
all those intimate moments I've had of sharing, pouring out Troy's life, I want to take every of well as one Why? Of back. Why? Because you want genuine. I was being genuine. You being generally genuine, but in the moment. But you want, I've never shared some of those things. Okay. And I ain't never <laughs> shared what you shared to, with nobody else. Nobody knows what you've told me. So I've genuinely kept it to myself. I'm being genuine with you. Well, keep, you know what I'm saying? Everybody but I, I am an open book, though. Yeah. I am an open book, though. I'm not afraid to talk about my experiences, my life, my story. Sure. Like, I'm not afraid and you of should it. should be. And so that's why I said that I'm an open book. And most of the reason why I'm an open book is because I never say nothing out loud about someone or about a situation that I haven't already said to that person. Sure. So it's not going to be a secret or a surprise. I ain't talking behind nobody's back or not. Right. I ain't never in those type of situations because it, if it's with you, I'm going to tell you directly. So I'm an open book. Mm-hmm. I just let you have it. And so why are you, t- you going to take it back? I just wanted to say something for the podcast. Fine. So it can make it seem like I was causing drama, but I really wasn't. All good. All good. What are we on then? Um, <clears throat> so, Melvin, you probably know the premise a little bit better. Uh, basically, we was getting into the concept, or we, we've been talking a lot about preferences. Mm-hmm. Preferences, relationships, we try to get off relationships. I don't really want to get into from a relationship point of view, but more so from the male reflective mm-hmm. um, in terms of how we govern ourselves, how we behave, you know, uh, the direction that we move in. But uh, there's just been a lot of talk recently, like uh, I'll say like a couple weeks ago, Ebony K. Williams was uh, having an interaction with Ayana Van Zandt. I'm, I think I said her name right. Mm-hmm. Um and basically, she asked her, uh, or Ayana asked Ayanla, I, I think that's how you say her name, asked Ebony if she would date a bus driver. For some reason, they were talking about men, relationships, right, right, and how right. black women can't find good men, this and that, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. And she asked her if she would date a bus driver. And she immediately came out and said no. That was basically too low level for her. She didn't feel like it was very aspirational, basically, as if niggas who drive bus or buses ain't, you know, ain't worth <laughs> Ain't worth you the know, time of day. You know what I'm saying? So it it stirred up a lot of conversation. And, you know, we there's always this uh, double standard where women can outwardly express what they don't like, what yeah. their preferences are, say what nigga can be. I don't like short niggas. I don't like fat people. I don't like broke niggas, whatever. And no one says anything. Everyone claps. They celebrate. They say, you know, you deserve that girl. Mm-hmm. Do whatever, do whatever do you need it, to queen. do. Do it, queen. But if my black ass was to come out and be like, <laughs> you know, uh, I, only, I only mess with light skin drinks. If, if, if oh, it yeah, ain't light, yeah. it ain't right. Now you a you colorist. Know what I'm you yeah. know, I'm a no, colorist. That's, that's not colorism. No, that's so. colorism. That's it's how colorism. they call it. Yeah. yeah, they call me a colorist. If I said, you know, I don't like Big Jones. Oh, now I'm body shaming. You, you are. Know, the community. Big or, Jones. You know. Snapper going to snap. Snapper going to snap. So I'm just saying. So it's, 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 it's this... This double standard that exists when it comes to preferences and things sure. like that. Um, but that's not what we wanted or what I wanted to focus on in the conversation, but more so, you know, uh, speaking from the male point of view, how in the hell do you navigate uh, dating, your interactions, you know, how you go about presenting yourself and marketing yourself, you know, to a society of women who are preconditioning themselves and each other mm-hmm. that what you provide may not even be to them worth anything. Sure. Mm-hmm. And in a sense of being, as Lace would say, disposable. The uh, facts. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, you know, uh, how do you work with that as a man? How do you build around that? And should you be building around that? Mm-hmm. Should we be, uh, I'm saying we as in men, not no, we right. as in yeah, me. Yeah. Um, should we be building ourselves around the preferences of women and what they do for some of the not. things that absolutely lace, okay not. lace finish it bro absolutely go ahead not. i see you feel strongly about it already I'm go ahead i'm just saying what what sense does it make to you for you as an individual to build who you are on the preference of somebody else you have to be self aware and have enough confidence in you that you pursue what you desire or what you want and that works for you not building a narrative that Oh, this is for somebody else because you'll lose yourself in that and you'll never meet the mark. Mm-hmm. What was that movie with um oh where my man was the the cook and he was trying to impress Shorty Think like a man. uh well that was Thing Like a Man, right? Yeah. Okay. One? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one. The first one, yeah, got yeah, you, yeah. got you. So Thing Like a Man, I mean perf- prime example. He ain't got nothing. That's a good, good example. And trying to do everything in his power to meet her preference. Where did that land him? 
with nothing until he was able to be his authentic self mm-hmm. and she saw something that she wanted from him but that was not that was nothing that he had to um portray that was false he could be his authentic self and that's when he finally was able to get her down the line if i recall the yeah. movie mm-hmm. correctly but putting on and all that no nah, no nah. get you nowhere didn't he eventually get a, his own restaurant he got a food truck. Yeah, food, food truck. truck. Okay, yeah, food okay, okay. Food truck. Food, food trucks truck. is food trucks is popping. But that that that's a prime example of this type of uh, scenario. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you and some people, that's fine. They can have whatever preference they want. I need a man, or I need a woman, or I need somebody that's doing this, that, and the third. They making this, that, all good. That is your preference. But if you are not in that realm of meeting that preference, don't shift who you are to try to make that happen, in my opinion. That is a good narrative. That is a really good narrative. Um, And I will also add to that if the person that you're with may not be where they, where you want them to be, but you can see potential and they're acting on that potential. Yeah. Then give them some, give them, give them an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Because. Um, in my situation specifically, I was a grad student. I didn't have a job lined up. I had I had like three part time jobs while being a grad student. One thing you can see by my hustle, I can do school and work multiple jobs at one time. This man gonna gonna put in some work. Mm-hmm. So look at the overall of the individual. Uh, and see what they potentially have to offer. Eventually, you know, become a more professional and things mm-hmm. of that nature. But. Um, Sometimes it may not be where a person is. Maybe it's where that person is going to sure. be. Sure. But I think, too, a lot of times what people miss is obviously seeing the potential, but looking at the intangibles that someone has. Like you mentioned, I can, I, I'm can. i doing school. I'm yeah. working three jobs. Yeah. I know he can work, and he's yeah. going to try to provide, et cetera. If you're not looking at like that, the long game concept, yeah, you yeah, gonna yeah. miss all of that. You can yeah. be like, this nigga working three jobs in his school. He ain't got shit. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got he all over the place. He all, he over, all the place. over the place. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it all depends on what you are looking for that make that in the long in the long run in a lot of ways, not necessarily the now as you mentioned. Yeah. So then taking that into consideration, when do you think that men should draw the line between? coming correct and I'm losing myself in this situation. Because, I think you, you know there's yeah. an element of coming correct, mm-hmm. you know, especially um to some degree if you don't have certain things in place. Yeah. But you know that there's a, a shorty that you're trying to get with, you're gonna have to do something. Like you're gonna have mm-hmm. to make some type of change or some type of, you know, uh course corrective action if you're mm-hmm. gonna have a better chance of getting with her. So at what point do you say, you know, I'm doing too much or I shouldn't do this at all because I think that there's some balance or element to that. I do think that to some degree you have to um, make yourself valuable for the consumer. Mm -hmm, Like mm -hmm, it may mm -hmm. not be good for me, but if it's going to be good for her and meet that need, I may have to make some adjustment or change or to some degree come to her Mm -hmm. uh, level, I guess. I think it depends because, again, some preferences are just – aspirational at best. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're not doing it, why the f*** am I going to be doing it? <laughs> I mean, that's number one. But number two, I think um, the the opportunity that presents itself is not losing yourself in it because, okay, this could be a preference for that individual, but if it doesn't align with who you are and what your purpose is and what you are trying to achieve, you'd be running a fool's errand. You know what I'm saying? So I think you have to find balance in fi- being self-aware for what you want, but also how that aligns with what they may be seeking. And the thing is, some some individuals seek those opportunities as a challenge. You know what I'm saying? So say for if I know, Shorty, I'm not even in, in her, on her playing field or ballpark, some guys will seek that as an opportunity or a challenge to see if they could obtain the goal. But what is the purpose of trying to obtain it if you can't sustain it? You know what I'm saying? Ooh. So... That makes that that makes no sense, but you got to be real with yourself in that um, arena as well. So, so basically, niggas got to learn how to fish in the pond that they. Hey, hey. you got to <laughs> fish, fish in the fish pond in the right where they pond, bite. Fish at the you level that you know what I'm saying. Pond. That's the problem. Some guys got to cast your net ministry <laughs> where they they need to go out back to the lake. <laughs> they need to go out back to the lake. <laughs> I don't think it's I don't think it's wrong with casting your net wide. 
and in different ponds. I don't think it's anything but wrong it's, with it. But that. again, some again, if you're looking for if you if you trying to eat on the regular, you got to fish in the pond where you know they biting. That's true. Ain't no need of trying to catch the big one. That's if true. You can't do nothing with. That's it. true. But I also believe if you want a big one, try for it. Yeah, but then you, you also got to be able, be willing to do the stuff. That's what right, I, and that's the point right. that I'm making. If you're gonna, if you know that you're gonna try to get into a pond that you're probably not ready for, okay, or you're gonna try to go for the big fish when you probably big don't belong up there, you know what I'm saying? Snapper gonna snap. <laughs> <laughs> Snapper gonna snap. If you know that as a man you're making that kind of leap, then to some degree you know that you're gonna have to try to make some of those adjustments to meet that checklist that sure. those fish are gonna have. Yeah. So sure. that's what I that I think that's what I'm getting to about at what point. And I guess I just answered it. If I know I'm fishing above where I probably belong, mm-hmm. then to some degree I'm going to have to try to meet some of the stuff that's on oh, the yeah. checklist, yeah, or at yeah. least the things that I can control. I yeah. can't, you can't control height, you know that type of right, stuff. Right. But those other things, you're going to have to do to some element if that's yes, what you think. You know absolutely. What I'm saying? So I'm just like, but I also, and sometimes you might not get the fish at all if that ain't that person's preference. I.e., with the example given, true. You know what I mean? I don't know what. Um, the name that you mentioned earlier, I don't know where her uh, career. She path. didn't really. Uh, she's a lawyer, so she's a lawyer. So she has a preference of not dealing with a uh, bus driver or something like that, mm-hmm. right? So at the end of the day, that's her preference. So if I am a bus driver, I could shoot my shot, but I know I'm probably not going to be. Successful. <laughs> so I'm. So I mean, you got to be okay with that, and I think that's where people get upset about other individuals' preferences. Is that's just what it is—a preference. You know right. what I'm saying? And I and uh, that's one thing I've had to come embrace. I'm not everyone's preference. Right. And, nah. and that's okay. Absolutely. But I am somebody's, though. Right. Because as a couple episodes, we we made it clear, I'm indispensable. 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 Yeah, indispensable. Okay. And uh, although one person, I, to one person I may be trash, to somebody else I may be that treasure. That's all you need. You and only that, need one. You only need one. Only need one. You only need one. But uh, one thing I would say for the individual who is perhaps going for the the big fish, um, just realize that the basics of what you're used to in your relationship, um, you're going to, you, you're going to have to stretch yourself a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Just be ready for, to do a little bit of extra work because it takes a lot of work <laughs> to bring that big fish in. What is, what did I say? Every time you say stretching, all I keep thinking about is, uh, that meme where the pastor like, he'll stretch your meat. <laughs> Because you keep it. I keep thinking. What, what was the context of that? I have no he idea. He was trying to just make a point to how God would make something stretch. Like when he so said a maybe like the two fish and five loaves, yeah, or something basically. like that. Okay, He'll stretch your meat. Stretch. That's what you. That's what you yeah. <laughs> He's a meat stretcher. <laughs> Why would you say that about the heavenly Father on the microphone? Bro? That was but the part that took though. me out. Though. But it's true like, though. If, if that was the example, if that given. was. I'm sure that was the context that he was yeah, using. It then, was but it's just like, given. why would you say that? But every time the... you say, it, I just keep ready. Keep you know what I mean. Pause. But be, be be ready to stretch. Be ready to stretch. Yeah. You're gonna have to. You know, you're like I said before. You know, the vacations that you used to go into Myrtle Beach, you might have to look a little bit beyond that from now. Right. On, you know. What I'm and saying? again, if that's not a, something that you can do that is sustainable, mm-hmm. to answer your point or question. That may be the time, like, yo, nah. there's no need in me going in the red trying to impress <laughs> <Big> facts. <laughs> Big facts. when I could just remove myself. And, I mean, yeah, I could drive an Infinity, but if I'm best suited in a Honda, that's just what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? You got to make that shift. You still getting from A to B. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. And you got to be a confident person to be comfortable with A to B, though. For that, sure, you know, especially when you're talking about cars, because a lot of people use their car as a status symbol or uh, something. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, so right, right. You gotta right, be confident, right. individual. Be like, look, right, right. I need an A to B. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like, but you but, gotta be confident with right. and secure with yourself my point, to be like, you but know, my, to get to my, that point. My point is that a lot of times we lose sight of the goal. The goal is to have a means of transportation. Right. What it is and how you get there. Irrelevant. I'm still handling my handle by getting from A to B. But like you mentioned, a lot of times people use it as a status thing where I know niggas driving in Benzes paying damn near mortgages monthly for Bro. status. Yeah. For what? Yeah. For what? And it's a proof that they don't have no credit. It, right. And if anybody is smart, a car's the easiest thing to get out here. True. That is true. So what I'm saying is that don't impress me much in the words of Shania Twain. Mm. 
that don't impress me much. You you got a lot of songs in hey, your, in your I'm library. A, I'm a musician, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah, that, I do this. That does make sense. That does I make do sense. this. So yeah, nah. That that does make sense. Okay, I feel you. Man. But it happens all the time. It happens all the time. So how much did we ever come to a a conclusion on how much men should take into account women's preferences when thinking about how they should be building themselves? Because we talk about we should be building ourselves right. for ourselves. Ooh, but, that's you good. You know what I'm saying? If it, aligns, if it aligns with your internal vision and pathway that you seek for yourself, mm-hmm. you take it into consideration. Yeah. If you are going to go into the red trying to meet someone else's preference, mm-hmm. remove yourself. And Lace, red just isn't in money. Money. It is an emotional. It's emotional. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, emotional. Time, health. talent, and resources. Okay. Yes. Stress. How <laughs> right. much stress am I putting? And, and is is what I'm putting and going into the red in these areas? Is it yielding? Um, is it yielding anything? Correct. Because if it's not, then I need to. I need to right. withdraw. Absolutely. And maybe a withdrawal doesn't mean uh, no forever. Maybe it's just a not right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? We can be let, cool. We let can me kick be cool. It. Yeah, let me reevaluate my you life. You can reevaluate yours. You know what I'm saying? And then we, maybe we can come and revisit this again. Yeah. And that's one thing that I wish young Troy knew. I wish young Troy knew that the high school relationship you got right now, this college relationship you got right now, that joint probably ain't going to last. Mm. I wish I... You really thought that your joint was going... Nigga, I thought I was getting married. Wow. That's wild. 18 years old. That is wild. I ain't laughing at you because I got married at 19 years old. Oh, for real? That's wild. I didn't know The first time. I did not know that. But yeah, I thought for sure I was getting married at 18. Yeah. Or at least shortly after college. Mm -hmm. Immediately after college. And this was pre-me knowing what marriage actually was. It was like... that was part was of on my you... vision board of life when I was little. <laughs> right, I your vision married. board of life, but you thought it was based upon <laughs> the family dynamic that you grew up in? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe it was TV. Gotcha. Hmm. I think I, I was influenced a lot by TV. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Um, 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 Zach married Kelly on uh, Kelly Saved Kapowski. by the Bell. Kelly He married Kelly Kapowski. <laughs> Kelly Kapowski. <laughs> 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 I live like 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 I I was like yo if Zach can be with Kelly through high school and then go to college and potentially marry her I'm like yo I can that can make it but Zach also tried to bag Jesse Spano he bagged everybody bro. and talked to everybody Turtle. he did mess with Lisa bro he he did mess with Lisa <laughs> see, he did he, see he he worried about Zach. <laughs> <laughs> He worried about Zach, and I was out here trying to find a Topanga, bro. You, I was hey, cook, real rap. I'm out here trying to be Corey Matthews. Topanga was bro. like that. Topanga was like that. Topanga I'm like, hey, like bro, that. come on. Yo, Zach had everybody on there. Everybody. He, he had Lisa. He had Jesse. He had Kelly. And then Slater's- uh, Slater's sister. Slater's sister. Right. He also had- uh, They went to a beach and worked on a beach resort. Oh, yeah. had uh, Mr. Whatchamacallit's daughter, the girl that- Yeah. I, <laughs> who owned the resort. His daughter was like His a manager daughter. or whatever. And then the two seasons- or the one season where uh, Kelly and Jesse wasn't there and was that biker girl. He had her. Yeah, Zach was on it. I knew for sure if Zach can go through all this stuff and get married, I could. Okay. That was my inspiration. Zach Morris. <laughs> Zach Morris. Zach- more is what is right? I ain't had no father, so what? I need. To, I gotta. I gotta make sure. I, you know, but there was so much TV going on. Then, how did you land on Zach Moore? Okay, so all right, family matters, right? I don't identify as Carl, so I ain't finna be laid up with no Harriet. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> <What? laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. What's wrong with Harriet? Nothing wrong, but that was not my cup of tea at that time. Oh, you know what okay, I'm saying? Once she's what was old, wrong with her? She's too she's dark older. for you? No, she's old. Oh, okay. She's older, I should say. You know what I'm saying? Troy you, Colorism. You try to get me a colorism, <laughs> yeah, and that's right, not right. going to happen. <laughs> uh, no, she was older. Okay, and so that's that. Uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I didn't identify as Uncle Phil. So I more so identified as um, Mr. Belding because Zach's dad <laughs> went on that motherfucker. I'm so confused. No, I more identified as Will Smith being with Nia Long. I wanted I Nia Long was gonna be my like wife. That. She, was like that. Yeah, she was she was, she was, like fin- that. She was finna be yeah. my wife for real for real. Um, so okay, didn't identify with no one there. 
Um, I'm trying to think of another TV show. Gina was gonna be was my next inspiration. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that actually would have worked for real, for real. So I had, I had some instances of, of of marriages or relationships that turned into marriage, and that was my inspiration because I wanted what they what I saw on TV. Mm, got you. I ain't mad at that. We just wonder how you landed on those. That, that was truly. Because yeah. yeah. back, well, back that, then, when we was younger, the 90s, a lot of sitcoms, a lot of different. That's big true. You know what I'm saying? TV shows. So I was just wondering how you landed on Zach. The relationship. And, and who, yeah. Okay, gotcha. But also, too, uh, Saved by the Bell was a, a lot of my formative, like, elementary, me- middle school years. That's when you start getting ideas yeah, of, like, yeah. you know, moving forward. You're going through the change and stuff like that as a puberty and stuff like that. So that's how I set my mind on it. Mm-hmm. Kelly Kapowski. Kelly Kapowski, bro. <laughs> what y'all know about Kelly? And Come then on, at, man. And then at that time, what what leading black characters did you have to like Kelly Kapowski specifically? But what what leading black characters did you have in a TV show that you could be like, man, I want to be with her? Like honestly, like like Laura Ashley Lenny. Banks, Hillary, right? Oh yeah, you're right. I didn't like Laura, not because no I didn't like the way that she them. looked, but I didn't like her like the way she the, her character. Steve. I didn't like her attitude I didn't in like the show. Her, I didn't like how she. So it wouldn't have made me want to. But like, no one pursued them, and the dude that actually pursued Hillary and Fresh Prince, the nigga Trevor. Yeah, he died. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but he died trying to marry her. He did. Big facts. Oh. Big facts. But also, I didn't. Like, <laughs> he died oh. tried to marry her. Oh, that's a good one. Will you marry <laughs> me? <laughs> so but but at the same time it's like but I didn't identify as him. Got you. Like Zach was that guy. How did I, Troy, Zach was that guy. Troy, he was white. I'm about, to, I'm about to ask you. But listen, right. you already know where I'm going. Go but Zach you already was know where I'm dude. going. Zach was that dude. And and um and Slater did not get the girl. You know what, what you saying? mean? Slater was with Jesse Spano. He had girls, but he never ended up marrying her though. Z- who did Zach marry? Kelly Kapowski. I don't. I never watched it that far, and, so and, I had no in idea. In the college episodes. Oh, um, got you. Yeah. That's right. I do recall the college episodes. In the college episodes, that's college when he uh, ended up marrying her. I do recall that. Um, but I was finna say, like, yeah, that was one of the only true ones that. that but come do to you mind. think Kelly Kapowski was settling? Because Zach had a lot of miles on him by then. <laughs> so I mean, like, so this is what I be talking about. Like your idol Get was into somebody. It, bro. Your idol was somebody who had hella miles on him, who didn't know what the fuck he wanted throughout. But yet she stood by his side the whole but, time. But here's the thing about Zach Morris. The super... Bro, he was like the coolest dude in school. <laughs> That's had, why so he, was, he was everything that you felt like you weren't at the time. Oh, did I not say that earlier? No, yes. no, you didn't. No, you didn't. When when he got punched in the face, he actually fought back. <laughs> <laughs> him, and, him and Slater was scrapping. It was a couple episodes. They was actually scrapping. They had blue, black eyes. Um... And I couldn't be Screech because he was the, he was the nerd, you know what I'm saying? I could have been Slater, but it's like the, the show. Uh, he was really popular, but he never got the girl, you know what I'm saying? In a sense of the prize of the show, and it could you could substitute Kelly for any other woman. It was just the fact that Kelly represented the prize on Saved by the Bell, and Zach was the coolest dude that was trying to get the prize. The coolest dude. The coolest dude. <laughs> he was the cool. He was the dude's dude. So that's why. <laughs> okay, Troy. So this is not identify as you didn't identify as as Zach a white Morris. man. You did not identify <laughs> no, I did not as a teenage <laughs> as a teenage <laughs> white man. <laughs> Uh, and that is why I think that's why we was originally yeah, yeah. confused. That's actually, thank you for thank you for doing because that. you kept saying I, I didn't identify as this person. I so wanted, he just to wanted to be a dude. How dude. the hell did you identify? I wanted to. I wanted to be, be who him. Zach you was. wanted to emulate Zach. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then this cat score had a perfect SAT score. A lot of niggas that don't know TV. that. I'm just saying. I'm. I ain't got no father. So who <laughs> am, who am I looking to to be my inspiration? Now my father did go to college and stuff like that, but I didn't know what that looked like. Mm-hmm. But I did see Zach Morris score a perfect SAT. Right. And mm-hmm. then go off to school. So what about Hillman? You didn't grow up watching, you know, Hillman and or any a of different those. world and a different the world. So Wayne then and but then uh, so you Wayne move Lee. on to the Cosby that, show. The person that I, the person that was my girl, they end up getting kicked off of um the show. Which was Denise. 
and I mm-hmm. and and a lot of people a lot of people get mad at uh, they keep saying Denise was a bad actress. First of all, she was fine. Okay, so she gets a pass yes. out of my book. Okay, okay, all right. First mm-hmm. and foremost, but then once again, looking at her relationship with Dwayne, she played mm-hmm. Dwayne. Now I identify as Dwayne. <laughs> I really do identify as Dwayne. How's she playing? She played him because he tried to give her the world. He tried to give her all his love, but she was like, it's not going to work. She was dating other dudes in his face. But she told him it won't go work. He chose to keep pursuing. But that don't mean that his feelings for her end. What, what that got to do with anything? Mean? Because my feelings for her didn't end. Stop. Because you my feelings going. for her didn't end. Well, I kept, but how the plan is like, she, on, right, she didn't sell him the dream. She, she told, told him straight, straight up. up. Okay. So how's she play him, though? He's still going for that big fish. He played himself. He, okay. Another one. He did. He did. Yeah, he but <laughs> he, was a, he, was a, it was a, he was a hopeless romantic. Still casting that That's why that you net. identify right. I am a hopeless So why didn't you just bro. get to that? Why you well, had to give us this round well, maybe we need to go around. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm just finding out myself. Well, he still got Whitley. <laughs> just say that. He did get he Whitley, did get and Whitley, Whitley was my favorite. I didn't like Whitley. Why? Because she was too whiny. Her voice? No, just her whole character of being uh, hoity-toity, being uh, bougie, you know what I'm saying? Like... And being as though she was like better than everybody else, but, but that that, I, I, that changed after she got with the women. right. That did change. But do you also think too that her and Denise actually had more in common because they both came from money, money. Yes, but Den- she was she um, she broadcasted it differently, right? But at the end of the day, at the core, still Denise. Uh, what Denise did, she it was like she rejected her own personal status. Right, she did. She she you know she dressed down. She was really baggy clothes. That was not really. I guess that was, that was the style. That was the flavor. But it wasn't like. But she wasn't trying to. F- I was gonna say she doesn't want to try to fit in the in crowd. But a part, I don't know. Maybe it's just her fineness just over. You know, <laughs> <laughs> took over everything. You know, just I did. encapsulated I did. with that. You were and you wanted to emulate people that you felt like were winning. Right. And to you, Zach Morris looked like a winner because he was he always able to seal the deal. He always had the girl. He always said, and Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wayne, although he was cool in a sense, he didn't seem like a winner to you because he wasn't able to come up on the thing that he was chasing. At no, I, I, now his pursuit of Denise was, I was like, yo, I'm a hopeless romantic just like you. I actually identify, if we use an identify in the right context, I identify as Dwayne. Um, and yes, he he did not get the girl that I wanted him to get. He ended up getting a girl, which later on down the line, as a, an adult, I appreciate his pursuit of Whitley because it was as if she was like, he would want to give her the world and she, she would be like, I don't want the world the way you're trying to give it to me. Give it to me. It's like, but I'm giving you the world though. But I don't want it in that way. And he just kept pursuing it, kept pursuing it. So that has inspired me as a married man today. But back then, it just wasn't my inspiration. Hey. What inspired me is when he told Whitley, it's a line to ride this ride. He mm-hmm. told her. Straight up. He told her straight up. And you either get this together <laughs> or, or get else. Done. You feel me? I also like Sinbad and uh, uh, what you call it's our relationship. Uh, oh. Um, uh, Jaleesa. Uh, yeah, Jaleesa. Yeah. But what was what his show? What was that? No, that was different world. Different world. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. My fault. Earlier My fault. years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. he was the... Uh, the R-A. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was that. My so fault. My, my mind went somewhere else. And then, you know, and then, okay, Boy Meets World, Corey and Topanga, like, we knew that was going to happen eventually, but I, I really wanted to be, like, I think it's Sean. Yeah, yeah. Sean. Sean. Sean was the... Sean, well, Sean was the had... Guy. Sean liked the black joint. He did. He had the black joint. He did. He, he got did. the black <laughs> joint, too. Black he mar- I think he married her, maybe, on the show. I don't remember. But uh, he got her, though. Uh, I can't I don't remember. Know they I don't got remember. The I know years. they after like college stuff. They got real serious. I don't know if they ever got married though. Nah, I like can't Corey recall. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, she I ended re- up dumping him, didn't she? Didn't the black girl end up dumping him? I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. She did. I think she ended up dumping him. She did, and he, and he took that hard. Him. He took that joint real yeah. hard. Hey, they say once you go black, see, Mister Feeney ain't had no insight to that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Feeney, bro. 
<laughs> Shout out to Mr. Feeney. So Feeney basically, had no TV, niggas for that. TV in a sense shaped your view. Bro, on I was raised by TV. Gotcha. I was raised by TV. That's where I got my morality. That's the reason why after thirty minutes, we need to make sure that we come to a conclusion that of what we learned from this situation, and to make sure that we know that we still love each other and stuff like that. Like I'm really quick to try to reconcile things because of. TV show type things. You know what I'm saying? They wrap things. A problem hap. We get a good little introduction in the beginning. A problem happens in the middle. 15 minutes later, you got a conclusion. You know what I'm saying? So, so you don't you don't like episodes that continues on the next episode? I would rather jump off <laughs> into some water. Oh, so man. You need quick outputs. Yeah. I need quick outputs. And so, like, yeah, I was, I was really shaped uh, a lot around TV shows and stuff like that. And that's what ended up being... Raising me for real, for real. Gotcha. Right. Mm. So, what's the moral of the story? I mean, I don't know if there is a moral today. <laughs> I, 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 get you, a, get you a reason, Kelly Kapowski. Look, get you a Kelly. The reason why I'm saying that is because it's we talking about preferences, you know, yeah. for the most part. And sometimes our desires don't may not align with someone else's preference, but Ooh, that doesn't mean that yeah. you know my desire changes. Right. So then it's like, how do I navigate that? Where my desire is this thing, but this thing. I'm not this thing's preference. If you, you know? lose yourself in pursuing that thing due to preference, that thing ain't for you. Legit. Say it again. Say it if again. If you lose yourself pursuing that thing that doesn't align, that thing ain't for you. Mm. Legit. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. I mean, you go back to the biblical days, people pursuing stuff that ain't for them. Mm-hmm. And it always ends it always ends bad. Always ends bad. Always ends bad. Now, if losing yourself causes you to grow, then I think that's a honorable pursuit. Right. But growth often comes after some form of setback. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can grow, but you oftentimes are set back in that growth. So is that a, is, is that a win? It depends on what the growth is. Right. Yeah. That's, right. A, that's a good point. It right. Depends on what the so if is. I if I am, you know, go go bankrupt in pursuing something, I know not to go bankrupt anymore. So I've learned that lesson, but that don't defeat the purpose <laughs> that I'm broke as hell now from all the dumbass stuff I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so our preference is a prison. When you think, think about it, our our you know, is it we talk about being comfortable all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, our preference is just a space where people feel comfortable. You know what I mean? To where um, sometimes our preferences aren't necessarily what's best for us, though, either. Fact. I think some, you know? yeah, it, it can be. Sometimes preference mm. um, can, you can miss out on your blessing by you definitely can. wanting to stick to a, a preference. And I think, too, a lot of times we could be more open minded than what we are, um, particularly as it pertains to preference um case in point you know what i mean got a homie we uh we went to flemings to eat and you already y'all know how flemings is you know what i mean upscale steakhouse whatever whatever this food trash i don't like this that and the third yada 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 this stuff too expensive xyz take the motherfucker that goddamn carabas you think it's a buffet <laughs> so sometimes your preference don't align with where you are True. you know what i'm saying yeah. and, but sometimes too the preference can be so intimidating, you revert back to what is comfortable and what you know. So mm-hmm. you just gotta you gotta be aware in that capacity. Get you get you somebody to help you navigate these things, man. Because yeah. it's, it's not necess- It's not the it's not the easiest. I hear your questions that you're asking, Mel, but you can't come to a immediate conclusion for yeah. an answer yeah. in every city. Mm-hmm. Like you got singular. It's you know. not singular, and you gotta you gotta. Balance out the scales, you know what I'm saying, and be able to see, you know, if I make this move, what it look like this. If I make this move, mm-hmm. you know, so you gotta have somebody to help you navigate those situations. For sure, for you sure. know what I'm saying. So, um, but for that lady who was saying that she wouldn't date a bus driver, to be quite honest with you, I don't even know what environment she would be in to be approached by, by a bus, bus driver. driver. The thing but, is, too, though, she could fall off bad enough where she might have to be on a damn bus. So let's not get it twisted. Yes, sir. Let's not get it twisted. So don't elevate yourself so high that you realize that once you make a fall, then you got to resort back to the very things that Absolutely. you didn't cut off. Absolutely. Don't, don't get it twisted. We all, we all one choice of decision away from having setback. So... Yeah, don't don't do that. We need to look for compatibility. We need to look for life aligning. We need to look for purpose driven type of relationships. Mm. 
I think that is I think that would be a good marking of mm-hmm. looking for relationships. Preference or uh preference or compatibility. Preference or compatibility. Legit. All things to consider. Well, on that note, this has been the Manly D's podcast. And as always, until next time, we out. <laughs>